Good evening, I'm Byron Scott with a CTV News Update. Topping our news tonight, the National Weather Service has confirmed that a tornado touched down in the Buckingham and Somerset sections of Bowie last night. Trees were snapped, power lines were down, and today the cleanup is underway. My brother had been communicating with me on the phone, and he told me Bowie was going to get hit. Clyde Lehman was home last night when that tornado came knocking on his door. Last night I did uh, peek out the door as the storm was coming down. My trees were sideways. Went into the bathroom real quick. My cat was in there, scared as hell. Came out, ran into the pool room and, you know, was all freaked out. He says it lasted only a few seconds. You know, it was crazy, but it was all over in about probably five or ten seconds. When all was said and done, trees in his neighborhood were snapped. Power lines were down. The path of destruction was evident. Oh my God. <laughs> That's the first thing that came to my mind. Jana Wilson was flying back from South Carolina when the storm hit. Her mom and cat were home alone. She was watching TV and she heard that it was coming on Bel Air Road. So she grabbed her cat and ran into the bathroom and hunkered down until it passed. Today was marked by cleanup and efforts to restore power. I've been through a tornado already. When I looked through, I saw the garbage bin and that tree fell. When I saw that, I took cover. <laughs> like everyone else in our story, Michael Bishop was home with the family pet. It was very scary, very, very scary because the noise was, was thunderous. The, the, the sound of the wind. The good news, there were no reports of injury. And I mean, everything just pop real quick and it was gone real quick. I got in the bathroom. As soon as I got in there, the sound went away. It was real sudden and a real quick ending. The National Weather Service is also investigating whether a tornado touched down in Anne Arundel County. Well, a AAA worker was killed late last night while helping a motorist on the side of the road. Police have identified the worker as 69-year-old Anthony Okozi. Okozi was helping a disabled motorist on the left shoulder of the Route 50 in the area of Collington Road. Troopers say Okozi was wearing a reflective jacket when a Chief Cherokee swerved to avoid hitting the vehicle and hit the AAA worker. Okozi was pronounced dead <coughs> at the scene. Well, Governor Hogan's decision to lift restrictions on carrying concealed weapons in Maryland sparks outrage among state lawmakers. Hogan's decision comes in the recent wake of U.S. Supreme Court ruling striking down a similar law in New York State. But it also came one day after mass shootings in Chicago suburb and a Philadelphia area. General Assembly leaders say they will look at every option during the next legislative session to curb the proliferation of guns on the streets. And an organization that advocates for rape survivors in Maryland is sounding off after the Supreme Court recently overturned Roe v. Wade. Officials from the Maryland Coalition Against Sexual Assault say they're concerned about how the Dobbs decision will impact rape survivors across the country and here in Maryland. According to the CDC, almost 3 million women in the U.S. have experienced rape-related pregnancies during their lifetime. Executive Director Lisa Jordan says it's important that female survivors of sexual assault have access to abortion services. These exceptions that people talk about putting in the law saying, oh, no abortion unless there's a rape, they really, they don't help the way people expect them to. Because there are very few rapes that can be proven. There are also issues of coercion. So things that may not fall under a legal definition of rape, but are nonetheless not consensual. And also just the issue of controlling your own body. And remember, if you or someone you know has experienced sexual violence, you can call 211 and get referred to a rape crisis center. And you are watching CTV News. I'm Byron Scott. An old hospital gets a new life. Our details up next. Stay tuned. A lot of my best memories of the holidays are centered around my grandmother. My grandmother's sweet potato pie, it just felt like a hug. I remember every time we'd come to her house, once you open that door, like it just hits you. And you're like, okay, the pies are ready, it's time. Food is a source of comfort. Food really helps bring people together. What if you could feel in control of your retirement in just a few clicks? At aceyourretirement.org, you can. Start with a free three-minute chat with Avo, your friendly digital retirement coach. Just answer some simple questions like, 
how do you feel about your ability to save for retirement? Or in how many years do you want to retire? To get free action items customized just for you, get your retirement back on track at aceyourretirement.org. <clears throat> Dear humans, I stand here today not for myself, but for every tail wagger, sloppy kisser, and curtain ninja. I stand here for each one of the thousands of dogs and cats killed in shelters each day, asking you to join our cause and help us make sure every best friend has a chance to meet one of their own. With Best Friends Animal Society leading the charge and your help, we can save them all. Welcome back. The DMV area is under a flash flood watch. The National Weather Service says there will be multiple rounds of showers and thunderstorms throughout the evening. You can expect several inches of rain causing rapid rises of water. Officials say that can lead to the flooding of rivers, creeks and streams. And investigators are working to determine the cause of two fires at RFK Stadium in the district yesterday. D.C. firefighters were called to the vacant arena just before 5.30 last night. When crews arrived, they found smoke coming from the inside of the building. Emergency personnel then discovered two fires on the basement level. Officials say it took crews about 30 minutes to put out those fires. And the county unveils new plans for the old Prince George's Hospital in Chevrolet. County Executive Angela also books today announced that a former hospital will be transformed into a mixed-use development site. The property will include 1,000 housing units, 40,000 square feet of retail space, a grocery store, and a new hotel. Officials say the project will cost $500 million to bring a lot of jobs to the county. Development plans for this project include direct trail connections to both the Anacostia Trail Network and the Chevrolet Metro Station, so future residents and employees will have efficient and convenient transportation options. We do want to do this green. We're going to have solar energy, energy efficient buildings, modern stormwater management practices. We're going to save green space, native plants. Uh, air quality monitoring, and we're going to reuse as much of the infrastructure and, and existing buildings as possible to reduce what we have to haul away to the landfill. The county has selected developer Urban Atlantic of Bethesda to redesign the former hospital site. Well, here are the latest COVID-19 numbers for our area. The Maryland Department of Health has confirmed 1,380 cases, new cases. The county's positivity rate is at 11.93 percent. 21 Marylanders have died of COVID over the past 24 hours, and 471 are hospitalized. In other news, Maryland State Police arrest nearly 100 people for suspected drunk driving over the July 4th weekend. Troopers arrested 95 people for impaired driving from July 1st through Monday, July 4th. Patrols were located in Prince George's, Montgomery, Baltimore, and Howard counties. Maryland State Police also worked with the Maryland Transportation Authority to patrol Route 50 in Prince George's, Anne Arundel, Queen Anne's, and Talbot counties. And coming up, some young residents get hands-on experience in the work world. We'll tell you about the special program and introduce you to some of the students hard at work here at CTV. Back in a moment. Stay tuned. My grandfather was part of the study, Alec Ware. And Frank Cooper just get educated about what went on with the study. It's just amazing how people still don't know. And now they're comparing it to the COVID-19. It's not a comparison. Due to the fact that they wasn't given treatments, things have changed now. I've been a nurse since 1981. I just started wanting to do something to give back, you know, after I found out what happened to my great-grandfathers. And I made the decision that I was going to get the uh, shot. That's the reason I'm doing it. I'm doing it for them. I'm doing it for myself. I'm doing it for my kids. Do you love sports? Then you should know about STEM. Because maximizing nutrition, analyzing peak muscle performance, calculating the perfect shot, and more are all made possible by science, technology, engineering, and math. In fact, there are more careers than ever in sports science. So if you have a passion for sports, then think about getting involved in STEM and improve everyone's game on and off the field. Get inspired at SheCanSTEM.com. 
While Election Day is around the corner, early in-person voting for Maryland begins tomorrow. It'll be held from tomorrow through Thursday, July 14th. You can vote in an early voting center in your county, or you can vote by mail, requesting a mail-in ballot before Tuesday, July 12th. If you don't want to vote early, you can wait for primary Election Day, which, of course, is on July 19th. And if you've seen strange movements in the sky over the D.C. area, don't be alarmed. A NASA aircraft will be flying over the I-95 corridor from D.C. to Baltimore, collecting atmospheric data along its flight path. The aircraft is a former U.S. Navy patrol plane that's been modified by NASA. Each flight will include one low-level pass at 1,000 feet above the ground. The aircraft will fly five days over a 12-day period. Additional flights will be conducted in Virginia. Well, Prince George's Summer Youth Employment Program is back for another year. CTV's Laurentia Moten has that story. Thanks, Byron. I'm in Largo, where the Prince George's government is hosting the Summer Enrichment Internship Program. The program has been in effect for the last 30 years. The first day began yesterday, and county residents ages 14 to 22 have been given summer job opportunities. Youth receive real-world job experiences from working 8.30 to 5 for a company that fits their overall career aspirations. Coordinator says... This experience is invaluable. What they learn, the exposure that they receive, um, industry-based training, um, actual work experience, having hands-on and mentorship opportunities, I would say it's invaluable. Here at CTV, we have a few summer interns who will be working with our organization until August 12th. They each say the experience so far has been very valuable. I think it's a really good chance to get some hands-on experience and meet some people who are already in that field. A lot of kids get this opportunity. You really are in front of professional people. You're really meeting people that's doing what you want to do when you get older. So if you're already know, learning at, at this age, imagine what you can learn or already learn and get better at at their age. If you or someone you know would like to join the program for the next summer, applications open March 1st of 2023. CTV News, I'm Lorenzi Moten, back to you in the studio. And let's get a quick look at our weather forecast tonight. Heavy rain and patchy fog with a low near 73. Once again, a flood watch is in effect this evening. Thursday, thunderstorms and showers with a high around 83. Friday, more storms and showers with a high near 84. Saturday, again, more storms, showers with a high around 81 degrees. And now for the community calendar, join the district seven judicial court candidates for a virtual forum tonight. Be a more informed voter by learning the role of the circuit court, candidate positions, and how each candidate can impact you and your community. Those featured are Brandon Burrell, Carol Coderre, Malik Shakur, Andrea Smith, and Rhonda Wood. The virtual forum will be held tonight, July 6th at, South, at 7.30 over Zoom. The meeting ID and password are below on your screen. And that's our news for tonight. I'm Byron Scott. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good night. traditional Asian parents. Now my father would go to work before I woke up in the morning and then he would come home too tired to play with me. S-T. I tell my son I love you every single day. I love you. Now my dad has never said that to me. Not because he doesn't love me but because culturally it wasn't comfortable for him. So I teased him the other day and I said how come you never say that to me? And he said, you're too old now. Now that he's a grandfather, he says, I love you to my son every time he sees him. My advice to all the fathers out there, forget the material things, forget the cultural restrictions. They grow up way too fast for you to waste even a single precious minute or moment.